uh, basically doing um, Go Ghost of Salt Marsh uh, module, or at least based around that, uh, set in my homebrew world of Alaris. Um, Alaris is a rather old world. Uh, one of the key things that you as characters would be aware of, uh, because it's pretty much something that everybody knows, um, is that about 6,000 years ago, um, something happened to the world. The world was like, you know, very advanced, magically speaking. There's probably some high technology places too, somewhere around the, around the world. They had basically had a magical meltdown that's referred to as the Sundering. Now, uh, if, uh, I know that one of you said you don't know anything about Faerun, uh, but what about you, Nightingale? Uh, did you um, didn't know anything about that? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know much about it. Have you ever I don't know of, much about the fighting itself. Have you ever heard of the Spell Plague? No. Okay. Well, basically, um, it's not exact. It, it wouldn't be the same thing as the Spell Plague, but it has some things that made me think similar when I read up on it. Uh, basically, uh, magic started going haywire. Whole continents, whole civilizations just shifted around throughout the world. Like you know, so land masses would suddenly be one would be one place one day, and then another day they'd be other side of the world, or they would have switched places with another world altogether. <laughs> Um, wow. Civilizations vanished. Other civilizations suddenly appeared. Um, whole races went extinct. Uh, there was these dragon people called minor dragons that nobody has seen since. That basically have gone extinct. Ascension griffins. Uh, griffins are, are, are gone extinct. Nobody like there's references to griffin people, but there's like no griffin people in the world anymore. There's just you know regular griffins that people ride on that are you know basically beasts. Um, there's all sorts of other stuff that was mentioned during this time, which lasted a thousand years. It's basically like magical version of Fallout. Uh, this oh. picture, like you know, the apocalypse with the wastes. Uh, people would like you know hunt down magic users. They would kill sorcerers. They would they they would um, slaughter wizards. You know, basically any high level wizard or sorcerer, very advanced dragon, basically fled the plane. Uh, not the plane, sorry. Fled the world for, like, possibly other planes of existence, other worlds, pretty much just to get out of there. Just because they were going to get themselves killed otherwise. So, basically, we went into the version of the Magical Stone Age at that point. Um, and Technological Stone Age, for that matter, too. Everything basically reset, in a, in a way. But, you know, there's still, like, t things buried far underneath. Uh, there were... T Sorry, there was talk of things like Warforged at the time, like, you know, wandering around, destroying stuff, and it was hard to tell who was responsible for those. Um, so, so there is the possibility of Warforged occasionally in the world, either buried deep, deep in the, in, in the underground, or sometimes, like, you know, being relearned how to make them. So Warforged are a possibility. Um, I haven't really come across them so far in this continent, but, you know, it's basically an open-ended thing. If somebody really wants to play a Warforged, I can allow it, because there are there is precedent for it. But you'd be like a unique individual, so it's not like you you would expect to see a warforged running around. No, if you saw a warforged, it's a it's an oddity. It's something very strange. Um, another race that was nearly wiped out, but instead basically was just um, magically neutered for the most part, was minotaurs. Before that point, minotaurs were believed to be very magical. Have possessing incredible magical gifts, and were thought to have created a civilization that was of the highest magical quality. Uh, a lot of people in the modern day don't believe those stories a bit. They think that it's just a fairy story, because you know, as far as they're concerned, minotaurs are brutes. Minotaurs, you know, are were a former slave race even in this region. Uh, that brings me to the other thing that everybody in this region of Meeg knows about. Um, up until 2,000 years ago, there was a massive empire that spanned the continent and spread to a continent to the south uh, called the Melum Empire. The Melum Empire was essentially a combination of uh, humans and lizard folk that were a lot like, ancient, like our ancient Rome. They built roads, they enslaved people, they tried to build civilization. Um, up until 2,000 years ago, they were the ruling elite. After that, they kind of split apart into smaller empires. Uh, lots of fighting, lots of this and that. You know, basically like Europe. So if you if you want to think of uh, of Meeg as um, as Europe in the Middle Ages, that would be a good way to describe it. Um, 
that empire was actually. But first, we have to. I have to mention the. Sorry. One thing I have to mention first is the deities that everybody knows about that are unique to Alaris. Um, first off uh, is the reference to the Divine Light. Uh, the Divine Light is supposed to be the ultimate creator, protector type deity. However, it is believed that the Divine Light is another god entirely. Like, the Divine Light is simply the title and the power, but the Divine Light is disguised, disguised themselves basically as another god. Like, another god is the Divine Light. Um, some think, like, in the modern age, that this god might be Paylor. Um, others, like, you know, list your lawful good or possibly just a good or creative god here. Uh, during the height of the Melum Empire, it was believed to be another deity unique to Alaris called Woos, the goddess of water also linked with life. Um, Woos, during this period, was often depicted as a combination of lizard folk and human um, in terms of body shape. Like she, she would look like a lizard folk, except she would have human breasts and human hair. Sometimes with forearms. Um, and so it was believed during, during that empire that she was the divine light. So they was basically... The, the, the huge religion at the time was th that belief. Um, since then, it is, it is rare to come across anybody who still believes that. However, there are still cults that still believe it. Another god unique to Alaris is Eum, goddess of nightmares. Um, some believe that she is the, the mother of all demons that she might even be an aspect of the abyss itself, given form and consciousness. She's basically, like, you know, one of the more scary deities to, to exist. And anytime you have a nightmare, they kind of evoke her name in horror sort of thing. Uh, the final deity to mention, unique to this world, um, and replaces the uh, the Raven Queen, for example. Uh, the Raven Queen wouldn't be known here on Alaris. Because uh, I created this god long before the you know I, I read anything about D and D, I, I, and I picked which gods of mine uh, from my own original system uh, should still exist here in a D and D version of it, and that would be Quare, goddess of death. Um, she is the protector of souls. She helps the dead proceed from the mortal plane to where they need to go. Uh, she would be basically someone that, um, if you're speaking over a grave, you would say something like Quare be with you or like go with Quare that sort of thing hoping that the person's soul wasn't still, like, trapped in the mortal or the shadow fell or the ethereal planes. Um, uh, that's another thing. When it comes to planar alignment, anybody who looks at it, uh, from a Alaris perspective, anybody who looks at a planar alignment map would, instead of seeing the Feywild reflected in Alaris, would see the, the ethereal and shadow planes are the ones that, bu that, that branch out from the, um, around Alaris, and the Feywild is actually around that. It's just something that, you know, I've noticed that other people, you know, other planar alignments, it's Feywilds and Shadowfell, and then Ethril is somewhere around there. Uh, on, on Alaris, it's kind of different. Uh, need any, uh, have any questions? That want any more details on certain things? Um, so, oh, go ahead. Uh, so the continent we're on is called Meeg? Yep, Meeg. Meeg. Uh, Thanks. And the kingdom this is this that the salt marsh is located in is Keoland. Uh, it's only been recently that uh, Keoland has acquired the salt marsh. Uh, it acquired it fairly peacefully. It's like you know, salt marsh used to be like an independent village, and now Keoland um, has come in and you know given it protection against the sea pirates, known as the. Um, God, where did I put that name? Uh, the, yeah, they're just called Sea Princes. Um, against the Sea Princes. And, um, you know, in exchange, they, they kind of have a garrison there. And, you know, they, they've brought in some other things, which are kind of upsetting some of the locals. Um, such as there's a new mining company in town that's been upsetting the locals. I don't think either of you are playing planning on playing locals, are you? No. All right. No. Uh, so give me a minute. Tell, give me a minute and tell me about your characters. Um, my character is, uh, Noxie. It's a goblin rogue. She, uh... Rogue! Goblin! Yay! Sorry. Like... She's, uh... 
No, go ahead. Gr gr uh, as a goblin, you might actually have heard of the name Grishtrap before. Uh, Grishtrap is is known by all goblins, uh, either in reverence or in hatred, uh, as the uh, as the queen of all good quote unquote goblins. Um, long time ago, like, supposedly over a thousand years ago, she uh, led some sort of revolution against the you know the the normal evil evil-minded, you know, greedy goblins and basically said, any goblin who, who's, like, you know, not really like this, who's just going to be forced into it, follow me and we'll, you know, come build a better a better world. Uh, some think that she's still around, even though it's been over a thousand years. Others are just think that's a title at this point. Uh, but her name would have been mentioned. <laughs> so, yeah, as a goblin rogue, you would have heard the name Chris Trot before. Okay. Um, yeah, and she's uh, mute because she's been cursed. So she tries to communicate through index cards. Nice. And she sp and she writes and understands common and goblin. Yes. Okay. Good. Yes. Sorry, I was writing writing stuff down. Um, oh, no. Writing stuff down is good. So I'm playing uh, Dovin. He's a human druid. So he's an older guy. He's got like three kids. Um, after his wife passed away, um, some of his wizard friends. He worked at a library. Um, he didn't practice any magic, but he he knew he knows some people that do, and they recommended that he try learning um, a few spells to sort of pass the time after his wife passed away. And he learned find familiar, and that familiar ended up being a fake creature. And through that fake creature, he became a druid. And so he, his dreams are kind of, his dreams used to be all about nature and sort of learning about um, being a druid. But now there, there's something wrong. Um, he, his dreams are telling him to, to, to find something or someone. And so all he knows is that it, it's somewhere near the water. So he's traveling around looking for where he needs to be. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, now, what situation do you think might have caused Noxy and Dovin to encounter each other? It's... Like let's say like outside either outside of town or right when getting into town, perhaps the you know up the um, you know up at another village or town, which whose names I do not have written down yet, but. Oh, uh, how are goblins viewed in Meek? Um, well, in, in Meek, like you know, sometimes they'd be considered kind of nuisances. Uh, they. They're not quite like you know hated. There's like some areas you know of to the far east. Uh, that are believed where goblins are, you know, thought to be decent. It's believed that that's where um, Queen Grishdrop settled long ago, somewhere to the east, um, in, a, in some sort of mountain range. Uh, and over there, like, goblins have a much better reputation, and as a result, you know, goblins are, you know, sometimes considered nuisances, other times, like, you know, thought of as okay. It, it, most people look, will treat goblins, you know, on a case to case basis versus. Uh, a lot, like, to various areas down to, the, like, the southern continent of Everest, uh, depends on where you're at. Uh, sometimes goblins are just, are, are, are hated, and other times goblins are, you know, okay people. But, and that's a really big thing. But in me, it's like, you know, a lot of them will say case-to-case -case basis sort of situation. Like, you know, some of them will view goblins with suspicion, but they won't necessarily attack you for being a goblin. Okay. At least not in this, not, at least not in this area. Well, Noxie's traveling to, like, find the person who cursed her, but, um... So, I was... What if my character... What if Dovin is, like, fascinated with goblins? Would it be possible that where Dovin's from, there, there aren't really goblins around? Or aren't any civilized goblins? Sure. Yeah, there's plenty, so, see, pl plenty of areas where goblins would be almost, you know, non-existent. Um, 
It just kind of depends on the area, which again, I haven't necessarily mapped that out yet. So to know, you know, where here, here, you know, definite portions, it's more like, I like to hear from people and so like, yeah, that, of course they can be like few goblins or no goblins at all where you're from. And I'll just make mm -hmm. a note of that. So then seeing, um, I'm sorry, what's, what's your character's name? Again? Noxie. Noxie. So seeing, seeing Noxie and just being like, oh my gosh, like, what is that? That you, you look so interesting like who are you where are you from and and so then i just sort of sort of pester you and follow you around yeah and i guess i just deal with it i mean I, i'd be uh noxie would be very like anxious at first like she would like kind of like withdraw herself and try to like just try to avoid you but mm -hmm. eventually but eventually she'll just fig she'll just figure that you're just like not gonna quit yeah like i i'm just like this this kind of nice older man and I've got like food and stuff and I love cooking and I've got good berries and so yeah at the promise I, I of food wanna... oh, sorry I didn't mean that over. no no go ahead yeah, at the promise of food I'd probably like stick around nice and of course I'm, I'm like asking you a million questions a minute and and then you figured <laughs> out that I'm mute <laughs> and then so <Yeah>. I... <laughs> So then that could be a cute little thing. Yeah, I'm just like writing a bunch of cards, showing you, asking these, answering these questions, I guess. But I have like mm -hmm. basic like yes or no cards as well that I just. I can show you, I show you my, um, my, my friend Callie, who is a crab. She sits on my shoulder. She goes, snip, snip. Adorable. Really... That's the word. That's the word on the card that she that she shows when he sees that. I know, isn't she just the sweetest? Give her a good berry. Aww. So where are you headed? Just somewhere. Somewhere. Me too. I am also headed somewhere. I don't know where I'm going either, but somewhere. I gotta go to sleep before I can figure out sort of direction we're going. But somewhere. We're, um, I guess we should figure out where we are right now. <laughs> um, so I, I guess so Dovin, Dovin is, is traveling either from like coast city to coast city or just straight up along the coast. Well, okay. Uh, basically, Saltmarsh is the southernmost um, port, or it's actually more of a village or a small town um, in uh, the Keeland Kingdom. Uh, south of that, there is mostly a mountain range. Beyond that, uh, not so much. Uh, are you playing a... Uh, so you wish to play a character who's not from Keeland? Is that what is that what I'm hearing? Yes. All right, then I will put a port marker um, in the southern area for my own reference. Let's see where my pencils. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I have my map next to me, but it's only like you know the general the general shape and a few mountain ranges are sketched out along with a few locations that I know about, so I want to put something else in here. So, uh, south past this mountain range, which is basically not very passable for road travel, but it's very passable for, like, boats, so a lot of sh a lot of ship, you know, ships going north to south. Um, the Keelan Kingdom has basically decided that the, uh, the mountain range is a good barrier for their kingdom, which is one of the reasons why they were happy to acquire Saltmarsh. Um, mm -hmm. Which I believe happened about five years ago, I'm going to say. Oh, that's really recent. Yeah, it's why there's still tensions in the town. Um, it actually might be listed on there, but I'm listed in the book, but I'm going to go with five years. Uh, so I'm going to write that down real quick. Sometimes things just come to me and I realize I didn't actually write it down earlier, so I have to write it down now. But, um, yeah, so it's been about five years since Keelan, uh, has taken over, uh, it was a peaceful taking over. It's more like, you know, Saltmarsh kept being harassed by the Sea Pirates, called the Sea Princes, 
And they didn't have, like, a navy. They didn't really have any way of defending themselves. So Keelan stepped in and said, hey, um, you know, we're, we're trying to expand our kingdom here. We're willing to make you part of our kingdom, and we'll protect you. All, all you have to do is, like, you know, we're, you know, there's a garrison, and we're going to send some people in to do some mining, and, you know, you have to pay your taxes. But, you know, we're not going to change anything else around here other than that. Of course. So, um, so of course, not all the locals were happy about that. I mean, the majority of them were because you see pirates are very bad and they're, they were like, you know, a, a small, a, you know, a small port and everything. But, you know, they, the, the majority of people are going, yeah, this isn't changing much. Maybe they're protecting us from the sea pirates. Some of the people like, you know, with a lot of money, you know, th that kind of varies depending on what they want. But the, the local council is all the same. So they're, like, you know, they were on pins and needles that they were going to get, you know, replaced with, uh, you know, with people, with imperial, you know, uh, not imperials, uh, with, you know, people from the kingdom, but they haven't been. It's all still local rule. So, you know, because of that, they're, they're mostly happy. Gotcha. But, okay, to the south, there is a port called... I'm gonna call it Orin. 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 Uh, hold on. Ah, ah, not spelling right. Hold on. Ah, type of. There we go. Orin. Um, there we go. Port to the south. Uh, it's south past the mountains. Um, it, it's pretty much just is a small it, city state. This is in Keelan? No, it's uh, past the mountains, so it's outside of the kingdom. It's it, it's its own little city state down there. Can you spell Keelan? Oh, uh, Keelan. Uh, I'm sure I'm, I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> Keelan and kingdom. Yeah, it's what's. I wrote that down as a note from the book. Ah. I, I spent last weekend because I was in a hotel room um, writing down some salient information so I wouldn't have to necessarily look at the book every few seconds just to reference something. So I wrote down, like, key NPCs that are, you know, in the book, some some interesting details, that sort of thing, and some scenario suggestions. But I'm pretty good working on the fly. That's why I like also putting together note cards and notes about each character. For okay, so we're in we're in Oren right now. Um. Or sorry, I... if you guys wish to wish to start starting off in Oren and basically making your way north, um, deciding that like you book know, a ship north and we can just have you arriving, um, at uh, Keeland uh, on on the first of the session, then we can do that. I mean, yeah, that sounds fine to me. I don't, I don't have any preference on on how we start. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty good with that. Traveling with, uh, sorry, what's your character's name? Dilden. Dil yeah, I'll travel with Dilden at the beginning, and then. So we're we're both traveling somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. And, yeah, the next port is you, you would know, um, based on the the schedules here, it is a small port of salt, <coughs> small but expanding port of salt marsh, in the kingdom of Keyland. Um, there's even, like, you know, talk that, you know, they need jobs, th there's jobs up there. There's jobs for, like, you know, just some, you know, minor work, if you wish to be, be minors. Um, there's other jobs, like, you know, for, to, to work on fishing vegetables. Uh, there's, you know, fishing vessel vessels here, too, but most of them are more major. If you, like, want to do some minor fishing vessel, fe vessel stuff, too. Also, uh, you would be aware from the schedule, um, there is a festival going on the day you arrive in, in Salt Marsh. Which might allow you to, you know, enter in some competitions, have a little fun. It's mostly spending coin rather than, you know, gaining coin, unless some of the other competitions can gain you coin. But, um, you know, especially for the, you know, the roguish one there, it might be a good place to pick pockets. <laughs> I'm just thrilled with the festival. I love festivals. Yes. So there, there's actually some good transit going on here from, um, from Orin. Um, because there's people that go, yeah, there's a festival going on up uh, up north, and you know, we, we we might just want to go up there and you know hit the festival and maybe do some other stuff. It's a good tourist draw. I am 
absolutely a tourist. Let's go. <laughs> it is, and it's it's on the it's on the water. It's uh just to the north of here, past the mountains. It's a, it's a fast okay. journey over water. It's like you know you'll be you'll, basically the festival would be tomorrow. This would just take you a day of travel on the water. Why well, say let's go? Uh, Noxie puts up. I agree. Callie? Snip, snip. All right. Callie agrees. Let's go. <laughs> so, through the. So, you say over the mountains and then over the water? No, it's just over the water because over the mountains are too, too difficult to actually walk over. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But. The the Orin ha has a good transport going down, but you know, back and forth between Salt Marsh. It just takes a day, and so people like you know wanting to go visit the festival, you know, a day of a day of sea travel to to go to a cool festival is you know sometimes worth it. Yeah, it's worth it, especially for people who are who are wandering around. So let's see information on Orin. One day tra travel. To Salt Marsh. And let's see here. So the um not not the captain, but the person who like helps book the travelers, you know, onto these sort of ships is a kind of grizzled human with a you know, with a salt and pepper kind of red no not salt and pepper, it's more like a salt and red pepper type beard. Um, kind of hanging down his chin, a little bit touching his uh, the, the top of his chest. Uh, and he kind of like looks down at you, looks down at from the, the, the plank at you guys, like ah, yeah, taking some travel, and are you? Oh, yes, we are. We're looking to looking to go to that festival up there in on the salt marsh. Right, wait, right, salt marsh. Ah, yeah. Okay. There's a festival starting tomorrow, and we should be able to arrive right in the morning. Perfect. I nod my head. Just a uh, pass it for the two of us and my little friend here, Kelly. Hmm. Well, then. What's uh... your name? Sorry, what, what did you say? Can you repeat that? I didn't hear you. Oh, what's your name, sir? Uh, and you will. I will apologize that any instantly created NPC. I am terrible with names, so give me one minute. <laughs> 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 no worries, no worries. We can just skip that. Um, yeah, that, my, my friend Shuttle does that too, but she's, you know, t but I, I always feel bad. It's like, I'm terrible with naming people oh, no. on the fly. <laughs> uh, I'll keep that in mind and only ask when I, when I actually care about knowing your name. I am, uh, <laughs> I am Josan. Jo Josan. Nice to meet you, Josan. My name is Dovin. This here is my, my good, oh, Josan. My, this is my new and wonderful friend, Noxie. Uh, Noxie waves. Uh, Noxie waves. Uh, don't see many of your kind around here. Isn't that, aren't they fascinating? Very green. I, I step back a little bit embarrassed. Oh, uh, don't be shy. Well, as long as you're not here to start any trouble, we're fine. Trouble? We wouldn't dream of it. I just give him a wink. <laughs> he, he grins broadly, showing off a few rotted teeth. All right. So, so that would be five silver per person. Excellent. I give him ten silver just to pay for the two of us. Uh, most kindly, yeah. Uh, and if you get on board, uh, there should be you know plenty of room, and there's uh, you know some. <clears throat> Yeah, sorry. There are her various hammocks down below for if you need some sleep, and there's plenty of room up on deck to watch the sea go by. We'll have a, a meal um, in a couple of hours. It should be big enough to help you out until until tomorrow. And I will apologize in bed with accents, so occasionally it drops out. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, on their way, I'm going to tug at your clothes. Mm hmm? I show you a sign. Thank you. Well, of course you're welcome, Noxie. Oh, um, ten silver is one gold. Ten silver is the equivalent of one gold. Yes. Okay. On we go, good friend. 
Now, is there anything you guys would like to get up to while you're aboard the ship? Um, well, I would definitely love to be above deck. Um, and if Nocti's going to join me, I guess I'd just ask, I'd just pester him or her. Her. Her, I just pester her incessantly with questions about where she's from, where she's been, what she like to do, what do you want to... And I just regale her with stories about my three kids and how I used to work at the library and how much fun Callie is. And it's like, I, I show off, I give Callie a good berry and I have her hold it in her claw and then she expertly snips it right in half. We've been, we've been practicing that little trick. It was fun. Uh, Noxie's amused the trick. She seems all kind of overwhelmed by all this pestering and stuff, mm -hmm. but she tries to answer to the best of her ability. She's writing like incessantly on these cards and showing them to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely asking these questions way too fast for you to, to keep up writing. <laughs> but yeah, so what, what do you get a chance to talk? Um... Mostly that she's from she's from a city somewhere. I don't know much about like where would that you, would be. Would you prefer uh, south against against another huge mountain range far to the south? Would you prefer east, which is closer to where the you know supposedly Queen Grishop settled, uh, somewhere to the north, um, somewhere maybe on an island? What would you feel um, more comfortable with? I think east. All right, so are we talking about a city that had that you know was mostly you know mixed people, uh, maybe a possibly underground city where the more goblins? Um, what sort of thing do you envision for the city? Less goblins. I think I think like she was definitely like not the norm. Like there wasn't that many goblins in the city that she was in. Okay, so maybe a capital city for a kingdom or other civilization off to the east. We're going to call this uh... We're gonna call it Greyland. Don't know why I'm calling it that, but it is now Greyland. The uh the the capital city. Yeah. Uh she will relate to you that she cannot speak because she is cursed. Oh no. A curse? Oh dear. Kind of... uh, she does not want to talk about why she is cursed. Oh, okay. We all have our secrets. Well, I'm not sure I have any secrets. I need to think about that. I don't quite remember things very well these days. Age will do that to you. Yeah. She does also relate to you that she was an orphan, so she doesn't know much about, like, Goblin culture in general, okay. but she does know she does know goblin though. She uh, she can speak goblin. She well, can, oh, she can't speak goblin. <laughs> she can write goblin, yes. <laughs> write goblin, yeah, and understand it. Yeah, it, it would. It's dwarven text, so like, it would. If you knew dwarven, you would probably know that it's like dwarven alphabet, but mm, I do not. Okay, so you don't recognize it at all. Nope. <laughs> it just looks like scribbles to me. Fun scribbles, but scribbles. Yeah, that's basically... Anything else you would probably ask about goblins, she probably couldn't answer. Unless mm -hmm. it was like something basic, like... Like, are you usually that short, or... Right, yeah, that's the kind of green? stuff I'd be asked. Yeah, like, are you usually that short, like... Are those teeth like? Do do goblins here have like really sharp teeth or, or uh, more normal? They can. Uh, goblins are a bit mixed. Um, like goblins, a lot of a, a, a lot of goblins are green skinned, at least on the mainlands. Uh, sometimes in the un in the underdark, they're more orange skinned or yellow skinned. Uh, same thing goes for the more isolated region of 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 Chult. Uh, which is to the south of, um, which is to the south and east. It's kind of hanging off of uh, of the continent of me, except there's a strait that kind of separates it from the mainland. So it's sort of a peninsula and sort of an island. But um, 
they, they are also tend to be orange, but a lot a lot of uh, Meeg and Eberus both have green-skinned goblins. Uh, the ones up in Meeg, pretty much however you want them, they can have hair, they, they, they don't necessarily have to. The ones down in Eberus typically are hairless. Um, you probably would have only seen, if you've ever heard about them, you've probably only seen the ones in Meeg, though. So if, you, if your character has hair, then they have hair, except for maybe the ones uh, further off to the east. Uh, like, for example, um, Grishdrop was a uh, Eberin goblin, uh, a goblin from Eberus, so she doesn't. She never had hair. Uh, you, I've got a picture for uh, of her for you. Let me put it in, on the Lars on the water. So you probably can't see my icon too well there. With the pink dress. Yeah, that, that's a uh, Grish. Well, kind of a young Grishdrop before she becomes a queen, but um. As I was mentioning earlier to, to Sage Man, there's a uh, no, one of my other Alaris adventures, Out of the Abyss, is set uh, over a thousand years before this, and uh, Grishop is one of the characters in that one. Oh, okay. I said she's like the the major one that's predicted by plot armor because she can't technically die because of what's going on with her, but she can definitely not necessarily be with the party anymore if something happens to her because <laughs> she's a pivotal character, but um. But her adventure doesn't need to be their adventure. Just, but, but you know what I mean? Like, they, you know, if they don't treat her right, if they get her ki quote unquote killed, which require me to plot armor her, it means that her adventure is no longer their concern. She's going to go off and do her canon stuff <laughs> instead of them being involved in any way. Hmm. There. But um. Yeah. Basically, that's how I run it. But at, at this point, in, uh, point in time. Uh, no character, not not even any of my favorite NPCs are protected by plot armor by this time point because the uh, the Guardian of Time does not need to protect them. They've already served their purpose as far as the Guardian of Time is concerned. Ooh. By creating and, and, and propagating other NPCs is basically how it works. <laughs> I have all this. I basically have all this genealogy work for things. So anything set far far enough in the past, I need certain people to survive because they haven't fathered or mothered certain other people yet. They can die after that point, at any point, but before that, they can't die. <laughs> nice. Hmm. Okay, well, Noxie does have hair. Yeah. Um, Sharp teeth? Um, you can't really tell, because she's... she's so to speak. <laughs> well, yeah, but also she, like, she also covers... She has a... Kind of, like, wrapped around her mouth, a uh, cloth. Oh, uh, okay. Kind of, like, symbolically... Yeah, so that you know, when people when she rolls up and people and she doesn't speak, you know, people kind of get it a little bit, at least mm -hmm. they get a sense of what's going on. Nice. She, okay. The index card that says "I'm cursed, so I can't speak" is very like worn out. Like she had it for a long time. Aww. How old are you? Um, uh, I'm forty-seven. She's. She's just eighteen. Eighteen. So she's been like cursed since she was like you're, you're probably like just... six or seven years. She's been cursed. She's been cursed for six or seven years. Yes. Okay. So that would be the equivalent of a young woman for a goblin, according to the the age charts that I've read. Yes. You're not much older than my, uh, or you're not much younger than my youngest daughter. You two would get along very well. She's a very good cook. I'm not. I try. Oh, that reminds oh, I... me. One other feature about Alaris that everybody would know. If you look up into the sky at night, you'd see two moons. Uh, one cool. is The closer of the two is red, and it sometimes turns pure white, depending if it's getting certain reflections. Uh, the other one is blue green, larger and further away. Hmm. Oh, I did not consider the goblin age chart. So I guess she's just an adult now. Okay, so how old was she when she was cursed then? I was, uh, I was writing down a note. She was definitely a child, so. So maybe more like five or six. Yeah. So I'll put down at around six years old, she was cursed. And Which means she was a bit the equivalent of a teenager. And goblins, they hit 
adulthood at what age again? Around eight. All right, so she's nine. Okay. So yeah, she is a, a, a she is a young woman. Uh, yeah, so she was six six, which is the equivalent of probably like a fifteen year old um, when she was cursed, or maybe like more like a thirteen year old when she was cursed. You know, okay, the, so it's only been three years. The, the, the sort of age that one you know might expect somebody to get cursed. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're all there at thirteen. There's if we ran the foul of somebody with the, you know with, with an angry disposition that wanted to curse people, that would be the right age to get cursed at. I mean, yeah, I know what the curse is. It's called puberty. <laughs> oh boy. There's that too. Too true. Actually, I don't know. So, I, I, anymore, so I'm just kind of thinking. Oh, I'm twenty. Oh, actual age? Yeah. Oh, I'm twenty-eight. I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, I'm I'm still the oldest by ten years. <laughs> like I think I've run into only one game so far where some, where somebody is is was older than me playing. There's gotta be older people around somewhere. Oh, there are, but I mean, I I'm talking to the people that I tend to play with. It tends to be I tend to be the oldest. <laughs> mm-hmm. But hey, what do I care? I've got a ni- I've got a nice condo with a gaming r- with a game room with all the cool cool books in it. That I can keep no my cats out of, so it's good stuff. Hmm. But anyway, sorry, didn't yeah, want to so... interrupt the RP here. No, it's okay. Right. Noxie, so Noxie's been for three years cursed, I guess. So I totally don't understand that a eleven-year-old goblin. You're eleven. You said nine. Nine. you're nine years old. Yeah. So I totally understand that a nine-year-old is not. A kid. So that you're either gonna let me think you're a little kid, or you're gonna have to you you have to explain to me <laughs> that you're not a baby. So whichever one you. I mean, I'll just let you. Okay, so I totally think you're a kid, and I'm fascinated that you're traveling around and happy to accompany you and and show you stuff. Callie likes to um, very lightly grip people's fingers. Not pinch, but just like hold on to people's fingers. Particularly mine. So if I happen to have my hands down and I, Callie is just kind of like hanging from my fingers. But if you let her, Callie will also pinch your fingers. Which might make it difficult to write. So yeah. that might be funny. Yeah. He definitely lets. Like, she probably recoils a bit. Because she's. Like, it's crab, so. She's <laughs> expecting a pinch. But she sees, like, it kind of do it to you. So she'll let it. But. Not when she's writing. Is there any other questions that you would have for Noxie? Um, what else would I? I probably just asked a lot about like where you're from, just like minor details and stuff, and nothing, nothing major. I think I think we got all the, the important stuff out of. In, in the question that uh, if she does have Fang. She does, like, remove the bandage a little bit to show you that she does, in fact, have, like, sharp teeth. Whoa! Those are gnarly-looking things. I mean, not gnarly. Those are very, very, very gracious. Teeth. Um, she, d- she does put the bandage back quickly and, like, looks unfair. Aww. I didn't mean to be rude. They're just not quite so blocky as mine. I just sort of tap my teeth. Probably makes it very easy to eat them. Uh, she nods. <laughs> so, at some point during your journey, um, uh, sorry, 
It's going to take me a little bit to remember names. Uh, Dovin would notice that his crab is calling, getting some attention. There seems to be a small blonde child with pigtails tilting your head this way and that and, and watching your crab. Hello there. Do you want to play with Callie? She kind of looks at the crab and looks back at him and kind of makes a little face. Crab has a name? Yeah, this is Callie. She's my friend. She can be your friend, too. Come on over. The, the little girl kind of hesitates for a moment and then, you know, slowly makes her way over and just kind of looks at the looks at the crab. Never seen crab as a friend before. We, we, we eat them. Uh. <gasps> Don't say that around Callie. Shh. And I, like, kind of put my hands over, over Callie's quote-unquote ears. Callie. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Callie, Callie knows, but Callie is not food. Callie is the friend. Callie is friend friend. What's right. your name? I'm Dovin. Okay, now all I can think uh, of is fish are friends, not food. Yeah, that that is that is. And for the hell of it, I am, the little girl's name is now Dory. <laughs> Dory. I approve. Hi, Dory. What are you doing on the boat? Are we at sea yet? Oh, yeah. You, you guys started off on your journey like, like an hour ago, and you guys have been chatting okay. ever since. Nice. What are, you, what are you doing on the boat? Are you with your parents? She nods. And, and my little brother. <gasps> little brother? Where is he? Oh, they're um, below deck. He, he d didn't feel so good. Oh... The sea can be kind of rough for some people. Gotta have sea legs. But looking at you, you definitely look like you have sea legs. The little legs. girl just looks at her legs and, and she kind of <laughs> studies them for a moment. It's like, they, they don't look like sea legs. Uh, they're, they're not green or blue or scaly or, or tail. Um, sea legs is when you can stand on a boat and not fall over. Oh. And I just kind of like model, you know, falling over a little bit. Some people, they don't have balance, sort of like your brother. I'm sure he's feeling sick. And if he tried to stand up, he'd probably just fall right over onto his butt. But you, you have sea legs. You might even be a sailor someday. Do you want to be a sailor? Um, well, uh, I, I don't know. It could be pretty fun. Are you a sailor? Can people like, <laughs> no, I'm a librarian. I pull out a little book from my bag. She kind of goes wide-eyed at the book. Can you read? A little. What's a librarian? A librarian. Okay, so do you know what a library is? Um. Do you know what a library of, is? There's a lot of books. Yes, a lot, a lot of books. Noxie, do you know what a library is? Um. She puts up a card, no. Library is this great big building. Enormous building. And there's books in there. And I mean hundreds and hundreds of books in there. It's amazing. So librarian, we work at the library. If you need to find a book, then I can find it for you. Uh, she seems to ponder for a bit. And then she puts up a card. Does uh, oh, she writes it first, of course. Um, do do you have books on curses? Not well. A library might have a book on curse. Depends on the library. My library certainly did, though it's a bit far away from here. But yeah, a library might have a book on curses. Maybe we, she should nods her head. we should go check out some libraries. I wonder if they have libraries in salt marshes. Probably not. But maybe. Certainly worth mm. a try. She nods her head. So where are you headed, Dory? Oh, uh, we're going to the festival. <gasps> Us too. What do you want to see at the festival? Well, um, 
I, I heard they have a nice puppet show. That will be fun. What is a puppet show? I say it's fun, but I don't actually know what a puppet show is. What's a puppet? She kind of like has her eyes go wide, and, and then whispers, talks in a low voice. You don't know what a puppet show is? She she just kind of stares at you like, as if she's confused as to how you could not know such a thing. You're an adult. You're supposed to know everything. I gave her I gave her a little wink. I'm from a faraway place. Uh, a place Tell me what is this? What is this? A luster? Well, uh, uh, d- d- um, she thinks for a moment. Um, d- d- do you know what dolls are? I do. Yeah. Have you ever seen a uh, doll that's made of cloth? Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes uh, a person's hand goes goes in the doll from the behind, and they, they make the the face talk with the cloth. Other times, uh, the the doll is like wood and, and has these little strings attached, and the person just kind of dangles it from above, and they, they make a move, and, and they tell a story. Oh wow! I think I mean my daughters used to do that when I was when they were little. I, I thought you didn't. They know have pop shows at the festival. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they. My daughter didn't call it a puppet show. They just called it playing. Oh. But they would certainly play with their dolls and. Do voices and do, they do voices and stuff, right? Yeah. Lots Aww. of cool voices. And they have they'll have these at the festival. That's wonderful. Yeah. Boxy is glowing at this. She is in very very much excited for a puppet show. <laughs> After hearing about what one is. We'll definitely have to go see that. Noxie looks up at you and nods like a lot. Like she goes, Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> And there should be music and uh, and caramel apples and and, and I, I've heard this various contests of some kind. Although apparently they're 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 for only for the big people. Uh, she, then she looks at Noxie and says, um, no, uh, no, no, I mean, uh, uh, old people. And she looks at, at, at Dovin and says, uh, no, no, <laughs> I, I mean, uh, people older than me. That, that, and she smiles at last, and you can see that her that her front two teeth are missing. Aww. Yeah, I, I give a I give a nice nice hearty laugh. What the? I don't know if I can participate in any contest for big old people, but <laughs> might be worth a try. Noxie Noxy originally wanted to go to the festival to pick pockets, but now actually he actually wants to attend the festival. <laughs> <laughs> And pickpockets. And pickpockets. <laughs> you gotta, yeah, I mean, you gotta, gotta satisfy that. Yeah. Well, hopefully we see you around at the festival, dear Dory. D- Dory nods. And, and my little brother. Uh, and better. your little brother. Yeah. I'm sure he'll feel much better once he gets off the boat. Yeah. If you don't have sea legs, it can make you quite sick. She still looks down at her legs when you say that. I still don't <laughs> know what you mean. You got them. Don't worry. You got land legs and sea legs. And she nods and once again, like you know, looks at the crab for a few minutes and then begins to, uh, you know, moves backwards. Basically, you, you think you hear her name, her name being called, and she kind of vanishes into, the, into a more swell of people that seem to be coming up from up, down below. Some what people? Uh, just, to, you know, more... There, there are people that were down below. It's like, you know, crowds. You ever been on a ferry, for example? Yes. That It's kind of like that. Like basically, you were, you, were, you were enjoying being nearly alone up there, and suddenly all the, all the ferry goers wanted to be up, up top... <laughs> <laughs> for all of a sudden, and she just kind of vanished into the crowd. Gotcha. So yeah, the, basically, again, uh, session one, you know, with people coming in from different areas and attending the festival or, you know, being a festival adjacent, um, like, you know, t- I've, t- I've had two other people who together ha- have 
you know, giving me a, a backstory and already, like, you know, did a little bit of uh, Session Zero stuff. And you guys have now done some Session Zero stuff, but, you know, your characters are bonding. And now there's only two other people that <laughs> they are supposedly joining. Um, they are supposedly in the game that made their character sheets and everything like that. But, you know, you never know how it's going to go in, the, in Session 1. <laughs> Right, yeah. yeah. It's always I, that. I once had a really elaborate game that a lot of people seemed excited for. Nobody showed up. What? I got so that's disappointed. Just... That's I spent, terrible. I spent some good work on it. I, I tried it again, and again, nobody showed up. So I just kind of like threw it into my maybe someday pile. I was like, all cool. excited. I d did some session zero. Was the, you know basically put together all these. Imp Introduce them to the NPC, saying, like, "Okay, after this, uh, you guys will be able to, like, you know, party partner up with like one or two of these NPCs, like, you know, based on if you guys are friends or not." And they, you know, so it was disappointing. But this this one seems to be going a lot a lot easier. And I set I set it up in such a way that if only two people end up showing up for the game, I can run it with just two people if need be. And well, so far, let's hope that's not happens. Let's, let's hope, hope that doesn't that... happen. Yeah. Yeah. But it's one of those things where as long as at least two people show up, I can do it. I'm not, I am not. don't have to call it just because less than three people show up. <laughs> Which I've had to do before in other games. Because they weren't designed for less than four people. But yeah, this one this one should be better for that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to Wednesday. That was so much fun. And I'm, yeah. and I'm sorry that I, I wasn't able to do a much longer Session Zero on the previous Wednesday. I mean, I know this week was a holiday, so I couldn't do it anyway. But the previous week, ugh, I can't believe I got sick on that day. It, it happens. Yeah, so I was glad we got to do a makeup for it. It's like your yeah, I'm excited for. And your characters are already bonding. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, his character is really nice, so <laughs> she doesn't immediately hate him. <laughs> like it, you know. It's. I mean, she doesn't immediately hate people on the fly, but like. You know, I was expecting, like, goblin racism or some shit, but... Mm, there, there, there's some in some places, like, they might not necessarily like you in Saltmarsh, but in, in general, like, you know, they, 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 in Saltmarsh I've discovered that, you know, a lot of it has to do with, a, you know, against the, you know, again, the, the climate there, like, you know, this place has only recently become part of a kingdom, uh, and you used to just be mostly human area, and... So it's like, yeah. Goblin races it might might still happen. It's just that it's not on a everywhere you go you're gonna be you're gonna, you're gonna have to deal with racism. Um, but yeah, in some areas you might be you might still have to deal with that. Okay. All right. Well, I'm excited for Wednesday. Yeah. Um, if you're interested in, in actually no tomorrow tomorrow session is you probably don't want to start right in the middle of things, but I do uh, post all my sessions up to uh, up on YouTube. Um, and tomorrow, uh, was, uh, you know, well, I also stream them on, on Twitch. Um, tomorrow is the next installment of On the Road, um, which is a long, long-term campaign. Although that, that one's like session, it's going to be like session 50, 49 tomorrow, I think it is. Oh, wow. And the major event is happening. But if nice. you do, if you do end up going back and, and deciding like, oh, cool, I want to, I want to watch this anyway. Uh, I really suggest starting with later a later episode, like maybe watching the heist episode is good. After that, episode eleven is basically where the, the the much of the story starts. Before that, it's random people keep dropping in and dropping out of the game. I keep having to add people. After session eleven, nobody's dropped out since then, and we're just about to hit session forty nine. So it's like you know, 30, yeah, more than thirty really episodes, long. and everybody's everybody's been st stuck with it. So. Yeah, that's a long... But the heist episode is still good. Alright, let me turn that one off. Yeah, it is a, it is a nice 